everybody, I'm here interviewing Michael Murphy. What games did you play? Can you give a list? One of the games we played for that was Cowboys and Indians, Harlem, football. We used to play every game, Melbourne's and all those sort of games young fellas used to play at that time. What name is your home district known as? My home district is known to be known as Sinon, S-Y-N-O-N-E, Borlan, Cashier. That was my home address. Were there a great number of families in this town centre when you were young? There were actually, there were a lot of small children, like, you know, beyond the same age as me now, there was big families up to Sinon Road. You know, all our neighbours had big families at that time. What were the most common family names then? The most common family names to me was O'Connor and Doyles. And of course, I can't live out the Murphys. I'm one of them. <laughs> they were the most common names at that time then. What types of houses were there? Were they detached or slated? They were... They were... Um, there were houses that was built in, they were started in 1942, before the war, and they were left there then, they weren't finished until 1946. Uh, they were actually tight houses, but they were solid concrete walls, you know, created a lot of dampness and all that, they weren't, you know, they weren't the real thing at that time in comparison to the houses nowadays, you know, but we lived and we were happy, you know. Do you know how this townsend got its name? I'd say it got its name through, I, I, I wouldn't be sure, you would have to ask somebody over to me, but I'd say it got, it was known as a big farm, there was a big farm here, this gentleman's have seen on, you know, it was a big farm, like I suppose that's how it got its land name, I, I, I'm not rightly sure of that. The house is more numerous in former times? Uh, no, not really, they weren't, you know, they weren't in big, Bundles, there were single houses, and maybe it could be five together, but that would be it, like you know. Where did people emigrate when you were a child? A lot of people emigrated when I was a child. A lot of people emigrated in the 50s, you know. They did. A lot of them went in, a lot of my own neighbours and friends of Trouble at that time, a lot of them disappeared in England. Is it good? Were any local fairs held around about? The only, the only local fairs. I have that was going into cash with the cattle, like. And if you were walking with farmers, you had a few bob up with farmers to keep you alive at that time when you were young, minding the cattle for them. That's, you know, that's the only fairs I remember, like the fair in cash. Do you know of any fairs from before your time that have stopped? Well, no, but most fairs have stopped you now, that's all finished now, like there's all big maps now and different stories, like, you know. There's no standing with cattle in the street like they were in them years, like, you know, they're big mess. I think that, you know, all fairs are kind of finished now to me and that they are finished, like, you know. Was the town fair held on a street or in a special fair place? Well, it was held in the streets, in my time, on the streets, like, you know, you'd be gathering the cattle in the streets, because traffic was very, you wouldn't hold fairs in there now, <laughs> you know, they were the world longer. Was look money given when an animal was sold? What was it called? How was it decided how much look money to give? Well, to be always, you just hear them saying, you know, you give me a, a look penny with that and you'll be paying for it, you know. You give me a look, now a look penny could be, could be a pound, it could be, I don't know what it was, like it might be only a penny maybe in them years, I don't know. That was a look penny. They probably shake hands like or whatever, like, you know. When a bargain was made, how do the two people show their agreement? By spitting and shaking hands? Spitting and shaking hands. Yeah. And just, you know, deal done. How were the, ma the animals marked? They were marked with, they had a red map on them. You could have different colours for their own, you know. Uh, right, they used to put an X on them or whatever, you know. Are there any ancient local moments such as crosses or standing stones in your area? Well, there's a lot of old castles, like there's one in Sinon, one in Ermain, one in Balatasna, uh, all 
Kassens nævn, det hæstlige af dem her, så vi går så meget elsket i år, men det taler ikke over for de mere i år. Men det er så langt fra det der blev en nice town der, as well, like, you know. What other ancient memories were are found in your district? Well, as I spoke to you there about Bangkoni, it is all his, you know, he has his own church, his own burial ground, and apparently when he was a young boy, he stood in the motor by a mail and looked across at the big house in Lovefield, and he was selling pictures, he was a peddler when he came here. He was selling holy pictures. And he says to somebody that one day I own that house, when he saw this big house in Longfield. And he did. And he also built a church in Borla, and he also built that house that the parish priest is in. He was responsible for that house, the building of that house. Bang Corny, like, you know. So he's buried in, his family is buried below as we are now below in his own burial ground here in Borla. What changes in the area over the years have you noticed? I have noticed big changes. Better roads, better housing, more houses, more educated young people are more educated, so forth and etc. There are big changes I did see, you know. And uh, you know what, like, that's the only thing I can say is that I did see a big change on it in the times we were growing up. Half the things wasn't there, you know. So. I'd like to thank Michael Murphy because our interview is now over. Thank you.